Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is the legendary photographer Jim Harrington. He's going to tell you a story about an amazing experience he had with the great Charlie Rich. By the time I heard Charlie Rich, he wasn't at Sun. He was at, uh, I guess, Monument or wherever they did, you know, hey, did you happen to see the most beautiful girl? Oh, no, that wasn't Monument, because that, that was, what's his name that produced it? Um, um, Cheryl. Billy Cheryl, Cheryl yeah. But anyway, whatever, that was 70s. And I love that stuff. You know, I was a kid. That was like, what, 73 or something? So I was like 10 years old. But I love that and the other one, Behind Closed Doors, off that record. I love both those records. And they just sounded so adult. I didn't really know what went on Behind Closed Doors. But it sounded interesting. It sounded naughty. It sounded adult. I knew I didn't understand it. I didn't even care yet. I just love the mystery of behind closed doors and this most beautiful girl in the world. It's like somebody. And I loved his voice. So I really loved him. I was a big Charlie Rich fan. So getting the chance to photograph him was pretty great. So I took those pictures in a hotel room and then I went to his backyard that same day, that first time. And I, and I got some pictures of him in a hammock that were nice. And anyway, those were pretty cool, pretty cool hang. Got to meet Charlie Rich. And um, in a rare moment of visionary self-promotion, I sent uh, a couple prints because Bill Bentley out at Warner, uh, Warner Brothers or Bill Bentley out in L.A. Um, was producing that pictures and paintings. And, you know, he was a big Charlie Rich fan and a big... Did he produce that? Or he at least was uh, put it into motion. So I sent two prints out to him. I said, you know, I can tell you're a Charlie Rich fan. That's a rare club we're in. So here's, so he's like, oh man, these are great. Thanks for, because you know, we need more pictures because the, the, you know, there's more going on with this record. Can you go back to Memphis to shoot him again? And this time I was going to make some real money. I said, yeah. So, I went to Charlie's house, and we were going to do, like, you know, just some, they needed publicity photos. So this is when I really found out, as I would fi find out through the years, the, you know, the real state of Charlie Rich. So I went there, and, um, and he just wasn't into it. He was like, you know, just because, you know, he, he wasn't into the music business. He wasn't into any of that shit. He didn't even want to play music for money. He loved music. He played it all day, every day. But the business, he had left it, and he had no interest in it. He just, anything to do with it. So we were trying to take these pictures, and they're horrible pictures. They're so terrible. He, he, he just looks like he's in an electric chair or something. He looks tortured. So he finally stood up, and he goes, let's go to Colt. I'm like, let's go to Colt. What's that? So Colt is Colt, Arkansas, where he was born. And I said, okay, let's go to Colt. So we got in his Porsche. I brought my, like, just a camera or two. I left all the other shit there. And we drove together over the Mississippi River into Colt, Arkansas. Colt is like a crossroads. It's if that, I mean, Colt is nothing. It's it's just an area more than a town. But it's where um, Charlie was born and raised. So we went. On the way, he stopped at a package store and filled the back of the Porsche up with what kind of cheap beer was it? Schaefer, just something dreadful. Um, you know, alcoholic beer all day. So we got there, and we went to this old shack that... Uh, I'm not sure if that's where he was born, but certainly could have been. Just some old shack. He had an old Jeep in a fallen apart carport garage. So we got in the Jeep. We got right out of the Porsche, got into the Jeep, we went into town had to get some gas. We went to this kind of full service gas station with the, the roof off the Jeep, right? And we went up there and <laughs> I don't know why I always remember this. It was just so funny. But we uh, pulled up to get gas, and we're just sitting there because it's full service. And these just two uh, big, 
they were probably 15 year olds, but they were just giant, big, meaty boys, just like hogs, just these big pink faces and they're tall and just big, short haircut. And they're like wiping the windows and pumping the gas. And then this woman, matronly woman, comes out and she goes, Is that Charlie Rich? And hey, Doris, how you been? It's been forever. So, you know, they have known each other forever. And she's standing there talking. She goes, are these your boys? Um, she goes, yeah, that's Tommy and Jimmy. And he goes, uh, how old are they? You know, he's 12 and he's 13. I mean, they're literally six foot five. I just remember Charlie going, the hell are you feeding these boys? <laughs> it's not that funny, but it was funny. <laughs> because they were elephants. They were giant. So anyway, we're going to go fishing. That's the deal. He's going to take me up to his childhood fishing hole. And it's just on the highest point of Arkansas, which is like 200 feet above sea level. But it's kind of this hilly area. And there's a pond. There's nobody up there. So we drive up there. He's got all the beer in the back of the, uh, the Jeep. So we start drinking and fishing together. It's just he and I. And, uh, you know, I'm snapping a picture every once in a while. And so much better than the stiff publicity shit we were doing, which was my mistake to be doing that stuff. But that's the other thing with these things. You feel like that's what the record company wants. Uh, but anyway, so we're, we're, we're shooting and drinking um, and fishing. And then um, we're getting pretty drunk. We go sit <laughs> in the field for a while near the lake and just talk and drink, kind of like a picnic, kind of dappled sunlight coming through the trees, sitting there with Charlie Rich, drinking cheap beer, quiet. And then we kind of start walking through the forest, and um, there's kind of a cliffy, rocky thing, and it's like, oh, this is kind of good for pictures. It's like, you know, maybe stand over here. So he's drunk at this point, and, uh, you know, and I'm pretty well into it myself. So he gets out on the edge of this thing and uh, he turns around and he looks at me and he just has this startled and he does a complete windmill with the arms like whoa and Charlie Rich almost goes off the cliff I mean it was a death fall and he barely didn't go over but his face was drained of blood and I'm like oh fuck forget these photos anyway we kind of out of the forest get back in the jeep uh, he drunk drives us down the dirt road back to the cabin. It's nighttime now. And it's been a hot day. It's like, you know, I had a bunch of beer and sunlight. And we're both kind of like drowsy. So, um, and um, obviously I'm spending the night. So I sit on the couch and um, he kind of disappears in the back of the house or something. And I'm just kind of, you know, I kind of, doze off for a minute all that sunshine and beer and I kind of next time I open my eyes there's only one light on in the house and it's this lamp next time I open my eyes um, there's a full silhouette of Charlie Rich and at this point in his career due to all the Schaefer beer he had a monstrous belly and so anyway the view I have is a uh, silhouette side view and I catch him in mid getting the last sip out of the bottom of the Schaefer can. He's got his head turned straight up. He's also got a uh, kind of a big winter scarf around his neck. It's July. It was hot as hell outside. And he's wearing absolutely no clothes except tidy whities No socks. He's bone naked except for these scrunched up tidy whities And that's my first view upon waking. I'm like, all right. So I'm sitting there, and, um, and his head goes down. He kind of does the um, shaking of the can, puts it on a table, and he goes over to this uh, um, Wurlitzer, just you know, old family Wurlitzer pushed against the wall. Pulled the thing out, still has his big winter scarf around his neck, his tidy whities are only half covering his, his, his buttocks. And he sits down at the stool and just starts going into this late night Charlie Rich Wurlitzer stuff. And he's 
can't remember if he kind of would sing, you know, kind of blah, 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 moaning and kind of humming and might have whistled. But mostly it was just a soulful Wurlitzer plan. And um, that's how I drifted off to sleep that night on the couch. <laughs>